Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this inbox review of Asuka Models M32B1 tank recovery vehicle. So this is the armoured recovery vehicle for the Sherman family. And this particular M32 variant is based on the M4A1 chassis with its cast hull design. So this kit is from Asuka or formerly of Tasca Models. And it's probably the most comprehensive or complex kit that Asuka has in their Sherman range. So as we get looking at this kit, we're going to see there's actually quite a bit going on. And it is a very distinctive looking vehicle. I'm quite happy I got my hands on it. It's kind of rare to find these uh, models these days. So let's have a look see and see what we get in the box. So cracking open the box, which is a little bit battered and worse for wear. As you can see here, that's actually not um, a Suka's fault. That's just uh, the simple fact that it's a sat in my stash the last about four or five months and I'm only getting around to doing a review now. So as you can see, a massive amount of plastic in this kit. So if anyone's built or seen any of my reviews of other Suka kits, um, the part count is never too high. However, this kit is the exception. The M32 has a partial interior as well as a very cool looking A-frame crane for like, you know, lifting out engines and transmissions and what have you. So it's quite comprehensive, there's quite a bit going on in this kit. So as always, we're gonna have a look at the uh, instructions and work our way from there. So the instructions as per normal for Asuka models are very well laid out, they're very clear. Uh, they're very similar to Tamiya instructions, so they are quite easy to follow. This is probably the most, uh, the thickest manual I've seen from Asuka, it comes in two parts. And I believe this is like a 39 or 40 step kit. So as always, with all armor builds, we start with the running gear. We have our uh, two part final track uh, assemblies. These go together very well. There's a drop of super glue and they're fine. And I haven't had any issues with Asuka's final tracks. Uh, you don't really need workables for a Sherman unless you really want one. Sherman had what's known as active or live suspension. So there was no sag on their tracks. So, you know, workables aren't always necessary. You know, with German tanks, yes, it makes sense to have workables or at least link and link tracks to get the iconic and very unique sag that those tanks had. Sherman, not so much. We do have special uh, mounting points for, I believe these are for the mine rollers. Uh, these are not included in the kit, but the um, a lot of these M32s were also used as mine clearing vehicles with the large uh, disc mine rollers, which I believe, what the M1B2s, I think they're called. Um, I, I don't think there's any of them left in plastic. Fertilinden used to do a set, but I believe it's our production. Then we have our Fifi SS um, suspension buggies, so we're starting off with the wheels and the individual swing arms, and then the actual buggies themselves proper. These are fully workable. You do use these small um, foam kind of rubber like pads that you have to cut the shape and that's what actually gives the spring tension for the wings or the wings to, for the arms to swing in a realistic manner. I tend to leave these out and just glue them in place and just take the time to ensure everything's aligned correctly. We do have some unique plate detail here for some of the buggies and that's actually for the mounting of um, various equipment that's unique to these recovery vehicles. Step six, we have our multi-part um, lower t um, tub assembly. We do have a small amount of interior detail on this kit because it has an open uh, turret so you can look down inside the machine. Again these come together very well. I've never had any issues with the Asuka uh, multi-part uh, lower hull assemblies. Seven we have our air filters and then onto eight our, our rear uh, plate here with our engine axis hatches. Then onto our differential cover this is the lathe type one piece mold, which uh, these are actually very nice. Uh, the Asuka model transmission covers are really good. The Dragon ones can be kind of hit and miss. Sometimes they fit, sometimes they don't. I have not had any fit issues with the um, glazes plate and the transmission cover. These are very, very good. Asuka nails this. Then we have our drawbar and um, tow hook mounts, which again are unique to a recovery vehicle. These will uh, this ex a particular anchor point for a tome hook mount will fit to the uh, forward glazes plate of the vehicle. Then we're moving on to step 11 and we're beginning to 
look at some of the interior details, at least the partial interior that's supplied. So we have some toolboxes here, our um, third floor which has a, a pulley assembly for our crane and winches. So again you're going to have to paint some of this uh, separately so you can actually uh, paint this. If, if you put the upper and lower hole and turrets together you're not going to get in, get in and paint this. So I would recommend painting this first and then assembling the model around it. A bit like an aircraft, you know, something that us armor lads aren't really used to. Then we're mounting our drawbar and our uh, tow hook assemblies to the front of the transmission. Step 13, we have our gousers and gouser covers, as well as our deflectors for the exhaust. Then we're mounting various details to the upper hull. I actually tend to do this step once I've actually glued the upper and lower hull together so I don't break anything handling the um, handling the model when I'm trying to fit them together. Just a, a little bit of advice for anyone who hasn't built the Sherman before and it's pretty much the same for any other kit. Uh, I tend to put the hull, upper and lower hulls together first and then put down the more delicate details. Just saves you from damaging them accidentally. Step 16 we're moving on to our driver and co-driver hatches. We also have a guide roller for our tow cables. Again, you can see these are quite busy steps. There's quite a bit going on in this. We have our mud flaps as well as our brush guards, which are in plastic, but these are very nice. They are a bit delicate. A suka plastic can be kind of fragile, so just bear that in mind. It is easy to break parts. Then we're adding more parts again to our our uh, hull size spare drive sprocket teeth for damaged vehicles and what have you. Step 20, again, more hull side details. Then we're moving on to our engine deck, our big armor cover and photo etch um, engine grill. We have another tow hook um, anchor point here, which I imagine is for the back of the vehicle. Yeah, exactly, here we go. You can see it being mounted onto the back of the engine deck. Then we have our um, deflector here for the engine grill. On to step 24, we have some large toolboxes that will fit onto the rear of the uh, the engine deck. Then we have some pulley and um, wheel uh, chalk assemblies here. Again, there's a lot going on, so I would recommend that you just take the time and study these instructions before you really get stuck into this model. Then we're adding our, our toolboxes and what have you to the back of the uh, engine deck here. And then we move on to the second pay or the second insert that has us continuing now into the actual open turret of this uh, recovery vehicle. So again, a lot of interior detail. I would recommend painting these um, as uh, individual walls and then assembling them just so you can get in and paint and weather these. If you assemble everything together and then try to paint everything, it's going to be a nightmare. So I would recommend painting these separately and carefully gluing it together. Then we have the turret roof assembly with our standard split hatch Sherman cupola. Then we have the mounting of the modified turret casement onto the hull. Step 31, we're mounting our buggies and tracks of the model. I tend to leave these off with the exception of the final drive. I leave these off, I'll mask the, the, the locating points off, paint the model, weather it basically, and then mount the buggies and then do my final pigment weathering once that's done. It just makes painting the model ever so easier. Again, though, it's just down to personal preference, of course. 32, we're mounting more drawbars and rollers, again, for the recovery um, system for this vehicle, as well as the crane assembly. And then we have our rear A-frame here for the uh, the winch. Now this is the cool part. This is this massive A-frame uh, crane here. And the main boom is one piece. Again, it is a super plastic, so it is kind of fragile. However, this is what makes this vehicle so distinctive. So we have our assembly here. Again, there's a lot of written word here, again, in English and Japanese. So do make sure you read this and understand what the instructions are asking you to do or will make life a little bit difficult for you. 
Step 36, we're mounting our, our crane boom to the vehicle. Again, this is going to be a pretty fragile detail. I'd probably paint it separately and then mount it down just to make life easier. 37, again, final details here. Just small little tow bars and uh, spare sprocket parts and what have you. Then we're on to a very familiar turkey with the M2 HB machine gun, or Maduce as the Americans would call it. So the 50 cal or 0.5 machine gun is probably one of the best in the market. The Asuka model 50 cals are absolutely out of this world. You can buy these separately. They can be kind of expensive. You're talking about $20 for a set of two or three of them. However, they are worth the investment. These things are amazing. We have different options for ammo drums here with the 100 or 50 round ammo drum. That's again nice. We do have a spare barrel if you ever you want to use it. Maybe you want to have it that the, the guys are using the 50 cal for a lot of shooting and have the barrel switched out. Possible if you want to. We have a solid piece of ammunition belt here. It's like a 50 round belt. I don't really use these because it's very hard to get them to actually look like real belt. Step 39, we have the assembly of our M1 mortar. I believe this is an 80 or an 81 millimeter mortar which actually mounts to the front here of the vehicle. It's actually very cool. We have some fuel and uh, water cans here. And the final assembly, we're adding our winch assemblies here for the boom, mounting the mortar and 50 cal machine gun, as well as a small searchlight. So this is a 40 step kit. It's actually quite in full for an Asuka model uh, kit. And then we have two marking options. We have C Company 609 Tank Destroyer Battalion, Bastogne, January 1945. This is probably the fake I'm going to go for, um, just because it's Bastogne and you know, it's a great story and provenance behind that. I do like the, the story of the Battle of the Bulge quite a bit. Uh, then we have marking number two, A Company 612 Tank Destroyer Battalion, Czechoslovakia, May 1945, so right at the end of the war. So that is our instruction manual. As you can see, it's pretty in depth. And then we'll just go through some of the smaller parts of the kit before we get into the, the plastic proper. So we do have our, our plastic, or should I say our final tracks. The detail is very nice. As you can see, the final consistency is, is just right. It's stiff enough to make it look like it's solid, but not soft enough to Soft enough that it's um, you know like too easily pliable. It's one of the things with DS tracks. Sometimes they just actually look like they're too soft and they don't look like they're made out of steel. These are pretty good. We do have large uh, tab marks here that have to be cut away, and there is a bit of flashing on the end connectors. However, once you paint over that, you're not going to see it because cleaning up vinyl is an absolute bitch. And basically, how this works is you have two lengths of track and Two lengths make one run, so there's four sections in total. These are very, very good, so I wouldn't uh, panic about these final tracks at all. Then we have two small bags of parts. So we have our clear parts here with our periscopes and lenses for searchlights and headlights. These are pretty nice. I tend to paint over these. I never keep these um, clear. It's up to yourself, with the exception, of course, of our, our lenses. We have a small pad of rubber here, and that's what we use to cut the, um, to create the uh, the spring tension for the workable Fifi SS suspension. And then we have some poly caps. We also have a bag of ridiculously colored string. I do like my string to be neon and post German 90s nightclub like. <laughs> And then we have our decal sheet. Again, it's pretty simple, just big allied stars and a few tactical markings and a small photo wedge fret with our engine grill and geyser grills. So let's have a proper look at the parts. So we'll start with our one piece upper hull. So again, this is of the M4A1 design with the beautiful cast hull. This is one of my favorite uh, Shermans. It's actually the A1 variant. It's such like a pretty, uh, I love the silhouette of, the, of this type of, this curve here, like there's like a shoulder and a back rolling back. It's really nice. I am seeing some sink marks, which is the first time I've ever seen any type of molding imperfection on an Asuka kit. However, the turret sits on top of this, you're not gonna see it, so it doesn't matter. Again, it did have a plastic sprue that's come off. 
but it hasn't pitted the plastic, which is really good. So I don't have to fill any pit marks that the sprue might have pulled out of the plastic. Again, really nice. We do have a nice cast texture. Hopefully you guys can see that. And we do actually have some small mounting brackets here. So if you took off this engine plate that had an engine exposed, uh, you would have a bit of detail here, which is nice. Unfortunately, there is no, um, I believe there's no A1 engine packs out there. Um, I think you can modify, I think it's the M4 engine to fit inside this, but uh, it might be a bit dodge. So I'm immediately gonna pull you over to one of the larger sprues in this, and this is the actual crane boom for the A-frame. And as you can see, it is a pretty impressive piece of plastic. It's, it's actually uh, quite impressive. Uh, there is a lot of pin or locator tabs here that are gonna be cut away very carefully and sanded just to maintain the, uh, the shape of this. Again, you have these little grab handles running up the length of this uh, boom here. So this can be a bit fragile. Hopefully it won't like damage any of the, the more delicate parts. Then we have some draw bars here. Again, this is all recovery equipment big hooks and what have you. Detail is very nice. We have the modified um, sprocket here with the uh, mounting cap for the mine rollers, I believe. Again, these aren't included in the kit. So that is a really nice uh, sprue again. Detail is nice. It's nice and sharp. I'm not seeing any pitting or any flashing. So that's nice. Let's move on to the next one. Then we have our modified turret. So once again, we do have cooling marks on the plastic. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but once you paint and prime it, you're not going to see it. I am seeing a little bit of flashing here. You might be able to see it. It's a bit disappointing, but again, a quick run of a file will get rid of that. There is a lot of pin marks on the inner faces of these and some burring. So this is a little bit disappointing. However, uh, you have to do a bit of filling here because a lot of this is going to be ex um, exposed. So that's a little bit disappointing, but again, uh, if any of you guys have seen my horse glider build, uh, doing pin marks should not be uh, strange ground to any of us. Then we have the sprue here, which is a standard M4 sprue. So we have our transmission cover. We do have some spare mantlets, a 75 mil gun, the end caps for the, the transmission cover. So a lot of these parts we're not going to be using, but at least you can go into your spare bits box if you want to make a custom Sherman or what have you. So again, this is a, just a, a standard sprue that's in all their kits. So moving on to C sprue. So we have our driver and co-driver hatches, our standard Sherman style split hatch cupola. We also have parts we probably won't be using, such as these applique armors for the turret and the glazes plate. But again, it's good just to have them in your spares. So moving on to sea sprue. So we have our co-driver and driver's hatches. Small bit of detail on the interface. There is some big um, pin marks, but there is a, an insert that goes on top of that, that the, the headrest or the head pads for the two guys in the front. So you don't have to do any filling there. So there's one or two small pin marks either side of the periscope mount. Then we have our standard Sherman split um, hatch cupola that we will be using on our modified turret. We have parts here that we won't be using. We have some applique armor and turret cheek armor that we won't be using as the M32 doesn't have a standard Sherman turret, if you will. We have this former, which is for forming photo etch parts to the shape of the head guards or the brush guards for the headlights. This is actually very handy to keep um, your, do hang on to these, should I say. They are pretty handy to keep, especially you're gonna be doing a lot of Shermans. We have some Pioneer tools. We have a little bit of flash here on our idler tension bars. We have the waterproof, the waterproofing mount for the bow machine gun. We have the fire extinguisher control panel for the engine deck our Gauser fence. As you can see here, the M1919, or sorry, yeah, the M19 machine gun, or the M1919 machine gun, it's a bit damaged here. However, the barrel is in the box, so I can just glue that back on. 
We have the coaxial that we won't be using. We have the early style three piece transmission cover. Again, we won't be using that. But these are all good parts for keeping in your spares. Then we move on to our standard uh, machine gun sprues that have the parts for the 50 cal. Again, it's a 50 cal. These are very good hollow barrels for works and well worth picking up. You can buy these separately. I'm not gonna bother taking them out of the bag because you see one 50 cal, you see in all of them. These are just some of the best on the market. Then we get three sprues of of our running gear. So we're just gonna take a look at one. So we do have options for road wheels. So I think these are spare road wheels. These are the solid version and then we have the stamped steel version road wheels. They are hollow, but there are there is inserts that go into them. Then we have our Fifi SS buggy suspen um, suspension assemblies. These are pretty nice. They can be fiddly to put together um, because there is a quite a few moving parts in them but they do build up into immensely nice little replicas of the real things. Uh, Dragon's ones are workable too, but the actual swing irons themselves don't um, pivot individually like the real ones did. So that's uh, why the Asuka model Fifi SS suspension sets are so good. There is, um, these can be bought separately and there is an adapter set that you can fit these to any Sherman kit regardless of the make. So well worth picking up if you want to add that extra bit of detail. And we get three of these sprues again, we have some nice cast um, numbering. I don't know how well you guys can see that. On the uh, central columns of our suspensions. We do have a little bit of flash on this kit in places, would appear. And again, we have more cast um, numbering and data again on our buggy uh, assemblies. But the detail is very nice, even with that little bit of flashing. So we have a couple of um, doubles here, so we'll just get through these nice and quick. So we get two sets of doubles. We have this sprue, which is these sprue. We have our brush guards. Again, a little bit of flashing. These do build up pretty nicely. They are a bit thick, however, so again, there's plenty of photo etch options if you want to use them. We have our headlights. The armored covers for our periscopes, our fuel caps and tow um, hitches and lifting eyes. We do have solid inserts for our headlights if you don't want to use the clear parts for whatever reason, as well as we have the solid um, plastic periscopes again if you don't want to use the clear parts. I just tend to use these ones, They're, it's all the same because I paint over them anyway. So we have a few um, spare track links. We have the head pad for the inner face of the driver and co-driver hatch. Again, an, a big applique armor piece again that I don't believe we're going to be using on this kit. And the British style fire extinguisher if you're doing a British Sherman. And we get two of those. Then we get two sprues of our idlers and sprockets. These are actually fit together. Yeah, there we go. So we have our final drive for the differential. Again, very nice detail here. We have two options of idler. We have the solid piece and then the hollow um, idlers. Then we have the insert for the back of the solid idler. Very nice. Then we have um, a ch uh, quite actually, we have three different options of sprocket, depending on what version you're building. Again, detail is very nice. Really nice rivet and bolt detail. It's quite nice. Again, not much to, to write home about. If you've seen any Sherman, you've seen these before. And we have two of those. One of the biggest differences with Asuka or Tasca Shermans is their multi-part lower hull assembly. And it's one thing that at first you might think will give you issues if parts don't align correctly. However, these go together really well. And as you can see, the detail is very nice. So we do have a fully detailed lower hull tub here. 
nice rivet details. Again, a bit of flash here, but a quick run of a file and that will disappear. Even the, your fingernail will, will um, burr it away. I tend not to, if I'm honest, paint my lower hulls unless it's like a competition piece and since I don't bother competing, um, I just don't bother paint these. I might get into that habit just for um, for closing sake, but we'll see. <laughs> then we have our sponsons with underside details, little drainage plugs here. Again, you can kind of see some cooling uh, marks here. But once again, once you prime and paint this model, you'll never see those. That's just um, like a wavy pattern that's on the plastic. You can't even, there's no texture or anything to it. It's just uh, how the plastic cools out of the mold. Then we have the sides of our lower hull tub. We do have some pin marks here in the inner set, um, the mounting brackets for each of the buggies. Again, that's gonna be covered by the buggies themselves and so nothing to worry about there. We have our rear plate with our engine access hatch. No engine or firewall details really um, included with the exception of the actual firewall itself, but it is blank. So if you do put your own engine into it, maybe you find an aftermarket, you're going to probably do a bit of scratch building just to detail the engine bay because there basically isn't one included. And then we have for the um, extractor system for the uh, engine, we have the two mounting places, plates and our deflector will fit into these. It'll fit on the two wings um, on either side here and they'll extend out. And that's where the ventilation system for the engine is mounted. Again, these are really nice. They go together really well. On the instructions, what you'll find is they will be numbered. So each part will go in there, um, go in which order they're numbered. And then they basically mutually align each other. So you don't get any misalignments that way. It's, it's a pretty good idea that Asuka does to ensure that everything lines up. Then we get our sprue with our air scrubbers or um, air cleaners. We get two versions, we get the later and the earlier types. These will normally have a C mark or circular, they're a little bit harder to clean up. We have a part of the engine deck here. Um, we have hollow parts for our, our fuel caps, so we could technically install fuel caps, maybe scratch build them in. I don't see them included in the kit. Then we have the actual armoured covers themselves, as well as our mud fenders and the rear convoy light brush guard, which are these two parts here. Again, the plastic is a bit thick, however, it's more than adequate for my needs. We do get a very basic crewman included in the kit. He's very simple, he's kind of wearing the earlier pattern uniform. But the facial expression and facial pre features on him is actually quite good. So like he should paint up quite nicely and you normally do get either like a British or a, an American tanker to sit in your turrets in the Suka kits, which is always a nice option if you want to use it. We have our um, exhausts for the engine here. And then we have some small tie downs by the look of things. So that is, what sprue number is that? So that is F sprue. Then we're moving on to L sprue. Again, we have a different version of um, fenders. We have some applique armor plates that we probably will not be using on this kit. But what I like the fact is that these are built from different plates of armor and they're all welded together. That's a nice touch. We have some um, gun mantlet and rotor detail. Again, won't be using that, but uh, these are pretty nice if you want to use them on another build. We have a naming fane again that we won't be using. And then here we have the mounting system for the side skirts. I'm not entirely sure if you'll be using the, um, these in this kit. I don't remember seeing them in the instructions. So either we're going to be using them or I'll most likely use them on another build because uh, Dragon doesn't seem to include these um, side mounting skirts for some reason. And they're quite prominent on Sherman's. So uh, this is always a handy thing to keep. You can't buy like photo etch sets of just the um, these strips, which is very handy for anyone who intends to build quite a few Shermans. So that's that sprue, won't be using a lot from that at all. Then we have two of this sprue, which is end sprue. Again, we have some spare um, sprocket detail. Again, these are gonna be fitted onto the side of the hull. Spare road wheel detail, again, two different versions. 
and they're going to be fitted onto the side of the hull again for replacing damaged parts on other vehicles we have some 81 millimeter mortar tube uh, or, or ammo tubes that will be fitted to the inner face of our turret I believe these were compressed cardboard if I remember correctly we are, I am seeing a bit of flash on the little parts here and there as you can kind of see there but um, again quick run of a file and all that will disappear we have our big pulleys here again for the winch system we have the small seating for the turret as well as a return roller a lot of different types of spring systems here I imagine these are for the tow bars actually I know these are these are the hitches uh, the hitch assemblies for the uh, crane so obviously you'll wire these then to the the, cr the cranes tow wires it's kind of cool and we get two of those and then the final sprue and then the final sprue is our partial interior sprue and this is K sprue so we have our big pulley system here that will fit into this floor plate here again really nice embossed detail then we have some drawers and um, workshop stations for the inside of the turret the handles are a bit soft if I'm honest but maybe uh, some careful application of pin washes will help um, highlight that detail just add a bit of definition we do have an insert for the firewall at least the firewall cr uh, facing the crew compartment it's very basic but still it, it's nice that they did something for it at least we have our exhaust deflector for the engine system this is solid but um, it's going to be faced basically a 45 degree angle facing into the tank you're not going to see the interface of it at all we have some small pioneer tables some more floor plates here but again with some nice embossed detail some of these very large toolboxes that I think fit onto the rear of the vehicle then these big crowbars and then this is probably some more detail for the pulley system which basically the entire thing is built into the, the turret floor which is the pulley system here and that is the last sprue so there you have my quick unbox review of Tasca's 135th M32B1 armoured recovery vehicle this is a really nice kit. It's very different in character to the rest of the Sherman family from Asuka. It is probably the more comprehensive kit that they've done for their range. This is not a weekend build by any stretch of the imagination. However, I would strongly recommend it for anyone who wants to further their Sherman collection. So if you're like myself and you're a Sherman fan, this is a great kit to add to it. So guys, I hope you really like this video. I know I haven't been posting too much and that's just due to time constraints with my college course you know it's a pretty long day by the time i get home so i will be trying to get a painting video out to you in the next week or so hopefully and if not this um if not the following week it'll be uh, two weeks from now so i will try to get as much content as i can out to you i haven't forgotten about you so guys i hope you look forward to those videos when they come out uh do join me in the next video and we'll be taking a look at doing some figure painting and uh, i'll catch you in the next video bye bye